Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about energy and simple harmonic motion. If you've already learned about the topic of work and energy, most likely this won't be too hard, but we're going to be talking, we're going to be primarily focusing on energy for this lesson. So when the mass is at its limits of its motion, uh, meaning it's at the amplitude, x is equal to a or negative a, as we can kind of see in scenario a and scenario c. During this, uh, during these both of these points, all of the energy is elastic potential energy. So it's equal to one half kx squared or one half ka squared, a symbolizing the amplitude. When the mass is at the equilibrium point where x equals zero, like scenario B, uh, the spring is not stretched and all the energy is kinetic. So we have all the end, so it's moving the fastest here, it's all kinetic energy, so that we have elastic energy is equal to one half mv squared, all kinetic energy. And when the mass is in between the equilibrium and the amplitude, so it's like scenario D, uh, when it's not at the amplitude, but somewhere like here, then uh, the equation is going to be both uh, elastic potential energy and kinetic energy. Okay. All right, so let's start doing some problems with this. Uh, a little bit of a demonstration there, but let's look at this. A, uh, example number three, a block of mass two kilograms is attached to a spring. The spring constant is 200 newton per meter, and the block is free to oscillate 3 meters from the equilibrium. It's frictionless. All these problems are going to be frictionless. So we have this thing here. It's 2 kilograms, and it's oscillating back and forth. Frictionless, it's going to be oscillating forever. Okay? We can see that the amplitude is 3 meters, going back and forth with uh, 3 meters. So what is the total energy of the system at any given time? So we should know that the total energy uh, is going to be, if we can find out what the total energy at the amplitude, we can find out the total energy the whole time. So if we do 1 half Ka squared, and I'm doing it this way because we have enough information at the amplitude. So this will give me 1 half K being uh, 200 newton per meter. And the amplitude being 3 meters. So what is this going to be? 9 times 200 times 0.5, and we should get around 900 joules. So what's important to know is, while this thing is oscillating, it's going to be going forever, but at every single moment this is oscillating, it has 900 joules of mechanical energy. Okay, so part B is saying, what is the maximum velocity? So we should know the maximum velocity is at the equilibrium position because at that point there, uh, it's not stretched, it's not compressed, and it's just moving very quickly. Okay, So it's moving the fastest at the equilibrium position. So we can say all the energy, which is 900, is equal to all the kinetic energy at the fastest point, which is 1 half the mass, which is 2, B squared. And now we can find B, uh, 900, square root of 900, 30 meters per second. And part C now. I'm going to do part C over here. So part C says when the block is 1.5 meters from its equilibrium position, how fast is it moving? So I know that the total energy is 900, and some of this will be kinetic energy. And some of this will be elastic potential energy because it's both moving and it's also stretched or compressed. Or I guess in this case, it's going to be stretched. So this is going to be 900 is equal to, um, and maybe, okay. Uh, I'm going to do 1 half K, which is 200. And it's stretched 1.5 meters. Plus 1 half the mass being 2 velocity squared. Going to do a little bit of math, and if we do the math, on, I guess I'll do it on my calculator. 900 minus 1.5 squared times 100. Um, then what we get is around 25.98 meters per second. Okay, so that's the basics of energy. Okay, we're going to do some harder problems, but that's the basics of how we're going to do all this. All right, so let's look at this problem. This is a bit more complicated, but we're just going to take it step by step. A simple harmonic oscillator has an amplitude of 3.5 centimeters and a, ma a maximum speed of 26 centimeters per second. 
What is the speed when the displacement is 1.5 centimeters? The object has a mass of 3 kilograms. So personally, I like to just change all these units to things that I'm familiar with. I'm just going to change this to be uh, 0.035 meters. Instead of point two, uh, and then I'm going to change this to be 0.26 meters per second. And then I'm going to change this to be 0 0.0175 meters. Okay, so this one is a little bit confusing, but whenever you're stuck or something like that, you want to maybe draw out the problem or you want to be able to just find anything. Okay, so once when you start writing and things that stimulates the brain, that helps you to move on. That helps you to keep going. Okay. So first off, let me, I guess, write things I know. V max is equal to 0.26 meters per second. Uh, we have a displacement of 0 0.0175 meters. Mass is equal to 3 kilograms. And then we know that the amplitude is equal to 0 0.035 meters. At this point, what I can see is that I can I have a few I have a few things. I have the maximum velocity and I have the mass. So it looks like I can find the total energy. I can find the total energy by finding the kinetic energy at the maximum velocity. So that's gonna be one half mv squared. This will give me the total energy, which is one half, the mass being three, and velocity being 0.26 squared. Now at 0.26 squared, and 1.5, and I get around 0 0.1 joules. So even though this is just the kinetic energy, this is the kinetic energy at the equilibrium point, so this is also giving me the total mechanical energy. Okay? Now that I know that, I can find what the spring constant is. I know that the elastic potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared, so... When it's at its amplitude, I can find what uh, k is. So I'm going to find this for the amplitude. Total energy is going to be 0 0.1. And this will be equal to 1 half k, which I'm going to be looking for. The amplitude being 0 0.035 squared. Do a little bit of math, and then I can find that the k is going to be equal to... Uh, to around 163.27 Newton per meter. So now I have total energy, I have the spring constant, and now I can find what the speed is when it's at this 0 0 0.0175 meter mark. So I know the total energy is 0 0.1. At 0 0.0175, I know there's going to be elastic potential energy and kinetic energy. So for the uh, connect or elastic potential energy, one half k, which is one sixty three point two seven x. It's at a distance point zero one seven five squared, plus one half the mass being three, and then v squared. I'm going to do some algebra and let's figure out this math. Zero point one minus point five times one sixty three point two seven minus point zero oh one. And what we get is the velocity is 0 0.22 meters per second. So this one was a bit tough. It had a few steps. But remember, when you feel overwhelmed, you know, just start working. Write down what you know, and then just try to find anything. When you move, usually uh, you start to discover things as you go. Okay, let's look at the next one. The following diagram shows a spring oscillating from 0 0.02 meters from its equilibrium position. Find the maximum and minimum velocity attained by the glider, the maximum and minimum acceleration, the velocity and acceleration when the glider is halfway away from its equal, equilibrium position, and find the total energy, kinetic energy, and elastic potential energy at this system, at this position. Okay, so a lot going on. If you can do this one, you're pretty much good with this whole part of this uh, chapter. So A, the maximum minimum velocity. First of all, let's talk about the minimum velocity. We should know that the minimum velocity is whenever this is going to the amplitude. So whenever it's going to the amplitude, it's going to have a minimum velocity. 
okay? And that velocity at the amplitude is going to be zero, okay? So V min is just going to be zero. It's going to be zero meters per second at the amplitude because whenever it, gets to, it reaches the amplitude, it's going to slow to a stop before turning back. But now let's find the maximum velocity. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to say all of the uh, elastic potential energy at the amplitude equals all of the kinetic energy at the equilibrium. So what am I going to do? One half k. K is given to us 200. Uh, the amplitude is given to us 0 0.02 squared. 0 0.02 squared. And this is going to be equal to one half the mass being 0.5 given to us. Uh, v squared. So let's find what this maximum velocity is. And then we should get a velocity of 0 0.4 meters per second. Okay. Okay. Part B. And some people might argue that the ma minimum velocity is negative 0 0.4 meters per second, but I don't like that because negative just implies a direction, so uh, it, we shouldn't be taking it for anything more than that. All right, B. The maximum minimum acceleration. So this is a little bit interesting. First off, what we should let's think about the minimum acceleration. We should know that the minimum acceleration is actually when it is at the equilibrium position. Because when it's at the equilibrium position, even though it's going the fastest at this point, uh, the spring is not stretched and the spring is not compressed, so there's no force. If there's no force, there's no acceleration. So the minimum acceleration is going to be zero at the equilibrium position. Okay, important to know. But now let's find the maximum acceleration. The maximum acceleration is whenever it's at its amplitude. Okay, so whether it's, it's stretched as far as it can or it's compressed as far as it can, that's when it's going to have its maximum acceleration. And we should know that because when it's at its amplitude, it's going to have the most amount, the force of the spring is going to be the most. Okay, so it's either going to be pushing on the block a lot or it's going to be pulling on the block a lot. But at the amplitude, it has the most amount of force. If it has the most amount of force there, it's going to have the most amount of acceleration. So what we should know is that the force of the spring, oh, let, actually, let me back this up a little bit. We should know the sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. We just have force of spring is equal to mass times acceleration. So we can do kx is equal to mass times acceleration. So at the position of the amplitude, and then we'll do ka, so k, being 200, and the amplitude being 0 0.02 is equal to the mass, which is 0 0.5, times the acceleration. So let's see if it's 200 times 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.5, and we should get 8 meters per second squared. Okay. okay, C, the velocity and acceleration when the glider is halfway away from its equilibrium position. Okay, so let's find, I guess we'll find the accelerate, I mean the velocity first. So we know that the total energy, um, we, actually, we didn't find the total energy, but we know it's equal to 1 half Ka squared or 1 half 0.5, 0 0.4 squared. Um, so let me, I guess let me first find the total energy. Total mechanical energy will be equal to 1 half K, uh, which would be 200 times the amplitude, which is going to give me 0 0.02 squared. And you could have found that in different ways, but we can do that. 0 0.02 squared. And we get 0 0.04 joules. Well, that's the total mechanical energy. Now the to uh, find the total kin energy, kinetic energy, elastic. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, okay, so sorry. I found the total energy. Actually, I didn't need to find that, uh, but it's okay. Uh, so I found the total energy, this 0 0.04, and when it's halfway, it's going to have some kinetic energy, and it's going to have some potential energy, because it's moving, and also it's stretched or compressed. Okay, so 1 half uh, K, which is 200, the X is halfway, so it's going to be 0 0.01, 0 
0.01 squared plus one half the mass, which is given as 0.5 b squared. So now I can find the velocity at that point, do some algebra. And then we should get an answer of 0 0.35 meters per second. And now when it comes to the acceleration at the halfway mark, again, we should be looking at what we did for part B. We can say that the force of the spring is equal to mass times acceleration. So Kx is equal to mass times acceleration. K being 200, X being 0 0.01. And then the mass being, what is the mass? The mass being 0.5 and then the acceleration. So we can find the acceleration at that point. 200 times 1 divided by 0.5. And we get 4 meters per second squared. Okay. All right. So now let's do the last part, part D. So it says find the total energy, the kinetic energy, the elastic potential energy at this point. So at the halfway point, we want to find all of those things. And the first thing that we should know about the, uh, about the total energy is the energy is the same the whole time, whether it's all the way at the amplitude or all the way in the middle in the equilibrium or somewhere else, the total energy is always the same. So we already found the total mechanical energy. That is equal to 0 0.4 joules. But now let's find the kinetic energy at that point. So we have the kinetic energy will be equal to 1 half the mass, which is equal to 0.5. And the velocity, which we found at that point, which is equal to 0.35 squared. 0.35 squared. So let's see what that gives us. And that gives us 0 0.031. 0 0.031 joules. Okay. And now let's find the elastic potential energy at that point. Uh, let me write this a little bit different. So we should know the elastic potential energy is going to be equal to 1 half uh, kx squared, k being 200, and x being point, uh, one, point zero 0.01 squared. And let's see what this gives us, 0 0.01 squared. And we get this as point, uh, 0 0.01. And I should have really already known that. Uh, and the reason why I should know that is because this and this equals this 0 0.4. So I should have known that this was going to be around 0 0.01 or rounded to that point. Okay. And that's everything with energy. Um, from here on out, it's going to be kind of new information. But this was a little bit of a recap of work in energy as well with uh, simple harmonic motion. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you with the next one.